So I'm done with my commercials now, and I'm ready to kind of give you some information and some training. But we found out all about that. So we're going to compare the different parts of FAR to one another. All right. So the very first topic or question that comes about is, you know, what do FAR subpart 8.4 and part 13 and part 15 cover? So what we're going to do is discuss those in regards to the individual elements of what they actually do cover. And so when we speak about 8.4, 8.4 is, is the direction for a contracting person to use, a government contracting person to use, in how to actually utilize the schedules program. Now listen, I, re, I just refer to it as the schedules program. You may re, have heard of it as the federal supply schedules program, or you may have heard of it as the MAS program, M-A-S, as in multiple award schedules program. I've literally heard it called in other names, such as GSA numbers, all right, and so forth. But there is only one program that we're speaking about. And when we talk about schedules overall, there's 39 schedules, and you know, they handle, they cover a multitude of commercial product and service. And so we're, if it's commercially available, it is literally, honestly, easier for us to talk about what's not on schedule than what is, because of the magnitude of what's available. It's not grandma's GSA schedule process anymore. Back years and years ago, the schedules process uh, was predominantly thought about as a methodology to buy commonly used items by all of government. And so when it was in place, and many of the schedules were mandatory. None of the schedules are mandatory these days. Now there are some uh, strategic sourcing tools that GSA have that will be mandatory. But literally speaking, the schedules overall are not mandatory. All right, and so it is an, a tool, a tool that contracting folks have in their toolbox to expedite the process. And when we speak about the schedules program, they're pre-priced, they're already negotiated. And when I say the word schedule, I'm literally speaking to you about a contract vehicle. A GSA schedule is a contract vehicle. It is an IDIQ, an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity type contract. All right, so they are task or delivery order type contracts. All right, but what the, what the concept is here, and many of your agencies do this all the time, your agency establish a, a IDIQ type contracts, and as you have reoccurring needs, you actually order off of that agency vehicle. Think about it in that regard. GSA has set up IDIQ type contracts for anything and everything, practically, that is commercial by nature, all right, it can be service, it can be supply, but if it's commercial by nature, it's more than likely available. There's three e-tools in GSA. There is what we refer to as GSA Advantage. It's an online buying tool. There is GSA e-library, which is a search engine to find the appropriate schedule. If you're a contractor in the room, and I, I would assume we may even have a few of, of those this morning with us, true? All right. You, as a contractor, can literally look at the use eLibrary as a search engine to discover where your schedule or where your contract is being held and who your competitors are. If you're a contractor that's never actually used or never been a part of GSA, I encourage those when I speak at small business events to literally to use eLibrary to find the appropriate schedule for what they sell. All right. And then there's the third e tool, which is eBuy. And that is the greatest thing since sugar-free cheesecake, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? <laughs> All right, because literally when we speak about eBuy, it is an electronic RFQ methodology. And you cannot, the, the time that is saved by posting your RFQ on eBuy, and what it does for you in putting together an abstract for you of all of those offers that you've got. And it holds that information for seven years so that you can come back to it at any, any time is just really phenomenal. And if you so desire with eBuy, you, you have the ability to literally make the award electronically. So really some good tools and I would encourage you if you're not real familiar with those to at least hit the, the, um, the eLab this week are to go to one of those specialty classes on the tools, if you will.